Friends, oh my god. If you were at today's stream or you've heard me talk about Beast, then you know exactly how excited I am and how much info. Like, hi. Anyways, I'm very excited. I've just had a fantastic stream on Twitch. I've done a lot of testing with Beast. And by a lot, I mean like I did like a day and a half worth of testing. And it's been mind blowing. I know a lot of you guys want me to cut to the chase. And I know you, a lot of you guys want me to talk to you about what's going on. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Beast. Now, I just did like a 10 hour farming session. Very casual, very fun, very in and out of maps. And I blew up a lot of maps. I collected a lot of beasts and I ran a whole lot of things. And I just want to give you a rundown of everything that I've done and everything that accumulated to like the excitement that I'm producing right now, because it's like off the charts. To begin, I was talking about beasts. I've talked about beasts on the stream. I've talked about beasts like on the YouTube videos. And a lot of you guys were like, well, beasts are really good. And I was like, well, how do I get into it? How do I get started? We know it can make us mirrors. We know a lot of people want to do Beast, and we know it's super popular. How do we get started? So we were actually linked a guide, which I have here on the screen. And this guide was super in detail. Big shout outs to Shotokan for writing the guide and creating it. And he did an absolutely fantastic job about how Beast work, what tier to farm Beast on, what the image of the Beast looks like, what you want to do and how you want to do it. And pretty much everything that you want to know about beasts is in this guide. And it's really, 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 really well done. A link to this guide will be in the description down below. Feel free to read it and go over it. It's pretty much how I decided how I wanted to do my beast farming strategy. Now the TLDR to the guide is grab a map tier five or lower tier four, preferably or lower and just get to business. You are hunting the spider. You are hunting the frog. And if you choose to make extra currency, you can package up Yellow Beast. Now, I have chosen to package up Yellow Beast. You do not need to package up Yellow Beast. This is a thing that I enjoy doing, and I've made a lot of currency packaging up Yellow Beast. So, in my tab right now, you'll notice that I have my Wisdom Scrolls, my TP Scrolls. I've got my Remnants of Corruption. I've got Gilded Beast Series Scarabs. I have a bunch of Tier 4 maps, and I have a Sextant. For this strategy, we're going to be using one sextant. We're going to create a copy of Beast Capturing Your Maps. If you choose to package Yellow Beast, this is really good and really solid. If you are not packaging Yellow Beast, you do not need this. Disclaimer, if you're choosing to package Yellow Beast, you need this. If you don't, you don't need this. And we'll talk about what it does, how it works, and everything that's going on. So we're going to go to my map device. I'm going to throw in a map. I'm going to throw in my scarab. I'm going to open up my Atlas tree with my one watchstone. I'm going to take my charge compass. I'm going to throw it on my map. Organize my inventory for a second. Got this. I've got this. I'm going to scroll down to essence because we're once again, because we're in low tier maps and we want to increase our profit per hour. We're going to do essence and we're just going to open up the map real simple, real easy, real quick. We're going to go into cemetery. All we're looking for is the beast. And we're looking to get the essences and get out. We don't care about anything else. If good loot drops, we're going to grab it. Now, in my previous video about essences, we're going to follow pretty much the same rules or the rules that you follow for essences. If you see an essence that's four modded or better or one of the pink ones or purple ones, you'll sit there and corrupt it. If not, you'll just keep going. So now, for me, it's very hard to see what the red beasts are. Obviously, this isn't a spider or a frog, so we know that's not what we're looking for. And we're just going to kind of go through our map and blow up our map. And now we're 6 of 10. I don't know what the heck that is, but it's dead. We go over here. We blow up our essence. We come over here. We blow up our essence. We grab everything. And we just, you know, grab our stuff, get our essences, get in, get out. We're going to look for the last beast really quick or the last two beasts. We got that one. That one's good. And then we come over here. We grab this one. Wait for Einhardt to be like, yo, bro, I got it. And that's it. That's how you do the entire map. You're in, you're out, and you just kind of blast. Now, a lot of you guys are going to say to me, well, beasts are really weird. How do you even know what you got in that map? How do you know if you got anything good in that map? Until you know what the beasts look like, it's a little difficult to tell if you got anything good or not. So a tip and trick, thank you, Depano, for teaching me this, is if you press H to open up your challenges and go right here to your beast theory tab, we can come down to our captured beast. Now you'll see there's a whole lot of images and a whole lot of beasts and a whole lot of hoot nannies and what nannies. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you're in a map, one of the things that you can do 
is you can just type anything you want in the filtered beast section. We can close our little thing and we can go killing beasts. Now you'll see as soon as he captures this beast and it goes one of 12, I can open up my thing again and I can immediately see what kind of beast I captured. Now, thanks to the compass, you'll notice that we got two of them. We got two of these. We'll get two of this next one. And you can actively track inside of a map which one of these cool little beasts you're getting. Now, I know you said earlier to me, but hey, man, like we're looking for frogs and we're looking for spiders. What are we doing with all these other ones? Like, do we need these? Should I be worrying about these? How do I know what a red beast is? How do I know what a yellow beast is? What am I looking for? What am I not looking for? What do I get rid of? Oh my God, you got four of that one looking weird looking thing. Is that one weird looking thing any good? You know, what's what's the catch? What's the play? Who's the hootin' nannies and what's the what and nannies? Now, I'll finish this map really quick and then I'll show you in the map just how to tell the difference between what you got and what you didn't get. And it'll make things in life a little bit simpler and a little bit easier. Now you'll notice we're starting to get doubles of everything. And this once again is thanks to that compass. Now, if you're not going to package the yellow beast, I'm gonna state this again, you do not need that compass. That compass is extra. That compass is roughly around 100C at the time of recording for four uses. For some of you guys, it might be out of budget. So we've killed all the beasts. We wanna know what's good, what's bad, what we should keep, what we should delete. Back before this league, from my understanding, because I haven't done beasts until this league, you would have to go package up the rare beasts that were bad and throw them out and let them go. But now, thanks to this league, we're able to just get rid of the red beasts that are bad right inside of our map and not worry. So you'll notice these right here with the cool images, these are our red beasts, and these right here with the very generic images are our yellow beasts. So I like to package yellow beasts, so I'm gonna keep all my yellow beasts but my red beasts, like these guys, I don't want. So if you hover over the beast in the top left, there's a little release button. You click release, you press enter. And just like that, these guys have been deleted right out of my menagerie. So at the time of recording, yellow beasts are roughly profit 1C because it takes 1C to package them, 1C to sell them. So if I look at this map, overall I made 10C just from killing the mobs or 20C, depending on how you want to look at it because of the packaging cost. And I kind of like did my thing. Yellow beast at the time of recording are an inventory's worth is called a set. One set is between 120 and 150 C, depending on who's crafting, who's buying, how much demand there is in the market and where you're selling. You can sell on a trade site. It's a little bit harder to sell on a trade site. You can sell on TFT. You can sell to other streamers. There's a lot of streamers who are out there that are trying to buy beasts, but you can move the beast pretty easy. If you do it on the trade site, it's a little bit harder if you do it in other places. So one set is roughly 120 C to keep it safe. Now we are looking for very specifically, we are looking for a spider and we are looking for a frog. Now I have a spider and I have a frog and I'm going to show you exactly what they look like and how to know what they are. So in my menagerie, you have to go to the menagerie to put the beast in. So if I open up my beast tab again, and I start scrolling through my beast and I'm cleaning up my beast as all these are yellow beasts and I'm cleaning them up and I'm getting rid of the bad rare ones, eventually you're gonna be able to spot the frog and the spider. Now, we're just gonna get rid of all these bad ones and this is how easy it is to clean this up. Just like this, we just delete all the bad ones. We don't have to worry. And within seconds, you'll see that we've cleaned everything up. Oh my God, I actually have more spiders. Whoa, where did these guys come from? Boy, I have a lot of spiders. Oh, sorry, I, dude, beast is fun, man. It's like, it's like catching Pokemon, bro. You just don't even know, man. You're like doing a couple of maps. You're zoned out. You're living life. You come to check your stuff. You got 40, oh, you got 40,000 spiders. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Family friendly, family friendly, family friendly. Probably have to bleep that out. Hey, when you're editing this, me talking to future self, this is how you know I'm having too much of a good time. So anyways, <laughs> we're just getting rid of all of our red beasts really quick. And just to show you, I know it looks tedious, but it's actually not that bad. You go through, <gasps> ooh, 
I just baited myself, dude. I forgot I put this guy in here. Okay, anyways. So, Fenimal Plague Arachnid. This is the good spider. This spider at the time of recording, not in bulk, is worth 0.4 of a divine. In bulk, it's worth a lot more. So, looking at this guy right now, we have 0.45 times. It's pretty good. And if we look for the Chimera, or the frog guy, this guy at the time of recording is 1.7 divines. On TFT in bulk, it's about two. If you have a ton of them, you can get two pretty easily. So we're just gonna assume it's 1.7 and two. Now, if you say to me, great, I've got all these guys in my bestiary. I wanna package them up. How do I package them up? Well, you'll notice that I opened up Einhart. I spent one C for a bestiary orb. I have a bestiary orb in my inventory and I'll just look up the beast that I want to take out. So I want to take out the spider. I right click the orb, left click on the spider. It comes out pretty simple, pretty easy. And just like that, I've packaged them up. Then I go into my little tab. I throw my spiders with my spiders. Yeah, I got a lot of spiders. Remember, these are 4C, 4.4 divines each, not in bulk. And these are my little imprint guys you'll normally find more spiders and you'll find imprint guys sometimes you'll go with more imprints and no spiders sometimes you'll go more spiders no imprints sometimes you get a mix of both and sometimes you get none rng is rng just like with any strategy now i had mentioned that if you want to sell yellow beast you'll have to package up your yellow beast a lot of people don't like packaging up their yellow beast i actually enjoy it it's a nice break from doing 50 maps or 40 maps or 30 maps and it takes a couple of minutes you unwind and you kind of do your thing now, I've been told it's easier to make your game window smaller so that this is closer to this. But essentially, you just take your bestiary orb, you package your guy, and you throw it in your inventory. The faster way to do this is to package up a whole bunch of them. The faster way to do this is to package up a whole bunch of them, throw them on the ground because it's just easier and you don't have to worry about your inventory. And then when you're done, just pick them all up. That's the easier way to do it. Packaging yellow base can be a little tedious. It can be a little bit of a nightmare. It can be a little bit of a headache. If you don't like clicking, packaging yellow base probably isn't for you. But Beast itself is a really good strategy. Now, I bought 225 maps worth of materials. I took all that money and I paid it off. And what I mean by that is it cost me 225 maps worth of sextants. Four uses, 100 CS sextant. I will let you do the math. We all know my math skills suck. So, 100 CS sextant, 5 CS scarab. Maps will just cost whatever you want to cost a white map. I self-sustained all my white maps. And essence on the map device, roughly 3C. If the math I did quick during stream was right, it was about 8,000 C worth of profit, worth of materials for 225 maps. I currently have left Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 26. I have 26 maps worth of materials left. I have paid off all of the maps that I have ran. I have put all of the money from those maps into my main tab and I have left nothing, everything that is profit, that is pure profit in this tab here. So currently with 26 maps left to run, I have a grand total of 38 divines of pure profit. All of my cost have already been taken out of my profit and put into my tab to go buy more maps and more materials when I run out. I have all of these spiders at 0.4 divines left to run. I have all of these amphibians at 1.7 divines, not including all the other ones that I'm gonna find. And I have inventories worth of yellow beasts to still pull out and still sell. Inventories worth. A quad tab of yellow beast nets you about five divines. It's really easy to fill up a quad tab if you choose to do it. I'm going to iterate this again. Only pull out yellow beast and only worry about yellow beast if you're running the charge compass. Now, in terms of pure profit, when we did the math on stream, it came out to five divines an hour casually of pure profit. The total per hour was about 10 but you have to like pay your maps and pay your dues and pay your atlas fees and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Depend, you know, it can be with a little RNG very profitable. I've heard other streamers have done this. They've gone zero to mage blood. I've heard a lot of you guys have been doing beast and have done very well. And overall, it's pretty good. 
Now you see I've made roughly, like I had mentioned, 38 divines and pure profit. I have all these spiders still to sell. I have all these chimeras still to sell. You saw all of my yellow beasts that I still have to pull out and sell. You see I have all these maps left to run. So it's a lot of profit. And on top of that, the most important thing to remember is we're also farming essences. So if you have a bad couple of runs with a couple of beasts and you don't see a good beast for a little bit or like things are just slow, you're not procking the Einhart thing, you have a lot of essences. And the essences build up and build up and build up and build up. And if I pull over the TFT bulk selling tab, I had tabbed out this essence already. I can actually refresh the tool and show you. If I were to look at the tab right now, you see I have about 18 divines and essences that I haven't even begun to sold yet. And if you watched the last video, you'll know that I'll take all the bad essences, I'll flip them into good essences, and I'll increase my profit by God knows what, depending on how many clicks and how much blue juice I need. So just in essences alone from just like casually playing over the course of the day, I've made a couple of divines an hour and just pure essences. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to skip to this part. So hello if you skip to here straight to the Atlas tree. The Atlas tree is pretty straightforward. I took beast.node and I took essence.node and then map sustain.node. Things to know that are very important with the beast node. Great migration gives you an 8% chance for an additional packs of beasts instead of monsters. So it turns all of the monsters on the maps into beasts. This is really noticeable when it procs. It procs quite often and it feels really good. We're going to go on the right side so that our red beasts appear in pairs. We're not going to go on the left side because we're going to be using Gilded Scarabs the entire time. So we don't need the extra missions. When we come to this bestiary wheel, we're going to take the hunt for the creations because this is how we get our frogs. We're going to take the hunt for Phenomus because this is how we get our spiders. And we're going to take natural selection so that beasts in your maps are more likely to be the less common variety. Between these three nodes, we have a higher chance of getting the frog, the spider, and everything else is kind of like whatever we don't care about. Now, if you wanted to hunt feral at the beginning of the league, feral at the beginning of the league is very good. You could use this to hunt feral. And if you wanted to hunt sagawal, which some leagues sagawal is really good, you would use this to hunt sagawal. These small nodes are really cool. Your maps that contain capturable beasts have a 5% chance of containing an additional red beast. So you have a lot of percent chance to get a lot of extra red beasts. You'll see down here in this beast area wheel, we take big game. That yellow beast in our map have a 15% chance to be replaced with red beast. And red beasts are our big money maker. So if we can get them to turn into more red beasts, we're pretty happy about that. I personally took <coughs> Mighty Hunter because Ironheart's slow. I haven't really developed a good feel for when he captures the beast, when he doesn't capture the beast, when I can move on. And this is all like a time and practice thing. I take this. Ironheart grabs the beast. He's, he's real fast about it. It feels really good. Odds are you probably don't need this node. And then over here, we're going to take these small nodes here. These give us a 6% chance to create a copy of our beast. So it's another on top of everything gives us an extra copy. This is giving us Ironheart missions. We're not worried about it. The essence nodes are the standard essence nodes that you would normally take in any map. The quant nodes are quant nodes. The map nodes are map nodes. And you'll notice that I've taken Seance. Seance, I think, is really underrated and actually very good. This, a lot of the times, is seancing our beast or our essence mobs. They explode for a ton of extra stuff. I found a few divines off of a off of essence mobs. So you never know. Maybe it's all tinfoil. Maybe it's not. I like seance. My buddy e has convinced me that seance is really good. So that's that. Now, my plan is to continue farming beasts. I'm working my way towards my mage blood that you guys have heard about. I'm at 130 divines right now of just like buying, selling, flipping, and doing things. And beasts have just been paying the bank and paying the bank and paying the bank. And it's been pretty nuts. I have another 38 divines of raw profit that I'm going to put in. I didn't move to the, my main stash tab yet because I wanted to make this video and show you guys. I have all of these beasts still to sell. I have all my essences still to sell. And beasts, bro, beasts have been great, dude. I love it. And I'm having an absolute blast. Now, I highly encourage you guys to try it and let me know in the comment section down below if you've tried it, if you haven't tried it, if you like it, you hate it, if I've crashed your market, I'm sorry. I don't think there's enough beasts in the market to actually crash the market. And I think if anything, the cost of the yellow beasts and the red beasts and all that jazz are going to go straight up. What you guys should be doing, big PSA, is you should be going and getting I-86 base wands and crucifying them immediately as people have been putting out bounties for wands with rampage 
Yeah, we were talking about this in Twitch in the stream today. There's a huge like bounty out. People are like fighting over who's gonna get the next Rampage wand. I know I got a buddy Depano. He's trying to get one. He's paying big money for one. And listen, if you guys if you guys like the game and a little bit of hunt, I would uh I would go out and try to get a Rampage wand, man. Oh, I definitely, I, I would definitely go out and try to get a Rampage wand. Grab some I-86 bases if you know a Blight Farmer or you're running your own Blight Ravage maps. You get I-86 bases, you get a whole quad tab in like an hour. You go crucible them up, slam them together, pray for Rampage. But for now, that's it for me. I'm going to get out of here, get this video edited. I'm going to go just hang out and chill and go farm some more bees and keep on blasting. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thank you for the support. I appreciate you guys. You guys are absolutely wonderful. Super. Just thank you. Seriously, thank you. Until the next one, friends.